Hello everyone, uh, there are two major tournaments taking place in the world at this time. Uh, the Tata Steel, as you all know, since I've been covering it for the past couple of days, uh, and there is also the Tradewise Gibraltar Chess Festival, which started on the 23rd of January and uh, will last uh, till the 1st of February. And it also has uh, some extremely strong players there, uh, such as Levon Aronian, uh, Hikaru Nakamura here, Pentala Hari Krishna, uh, Maxime Vachier Lagrave, uh, Lequeng Liam, and of course Vasily Ivanchuk. So definitely another strong tournament and like I said it's uh, it's not that cool that the tournaments are overlapping but uh, again it's very nice that there are so many chess events in the world that they will eventually overlap so a lot of content for chess. Uh, and uh, I decided to show you one game by Nakamura and the uh, Russian Grandmaster Valentina Gunina from round 2 of the Gibraltar Chess Festival as uh, I don't think I've ever shown a game that lasts for 135 moves. Uh, although only the first uh, 32 moves are really important. So let's see this game. Uh, Nakamura has the white pieces and he opens with e4. Uh, we have c6, d4 and d5, the Karl Kahn defense. We have e5, the advanced variation and uh, bishop to f5. Kind of inviting Nakamura to go for g4. Uh, as you all know, this is the bayonet attack. Uh, but instead of g4, Nakamura goes for h4. And this is something called the, the Tal variation of the advanced Karl Kahn. Uh, we have h5, h6 is also possible here, uh, bishop to d3, bishop captures, queen captures, and e6. Uh, now uh, Gunina has uh, exchanged her light square bishop, she placed all of her pawns in light squares, and now this bishop can freely waltz uh, through the dark squares. Uh, bishop to g5, attacking the queen, queen to a5 check, and knight to d2 now. Uh, other moves were possible, but this knight will come uh, come in very handy uh, at uh, at the moment Nakamura decides to push c4 to support the c4 square. Uh, knight to e7, we have knight to f3, uh, knight to f5 now, and Nakamura castles. And here we have queen to a6, uh, Gunina offers a trade of queens. Nakamura declines this, now this c4 move comes in very handy, as the knight on d2 is supporting the c4 square. Uh, bishop to b4, and here we have b3. Uh, knight to d7, rook f to c1, and the Gunina castles. Uh, we have a3, and here you can either capture the knight on d2, maybe retreat with the bishop. Uh, Gunina retreated with the bishop. If you capture with the bishop captures on d2, uh, after queen captures, you do have this uh, queen to b6 move, threatening the b3 pawn, also maybe giving more pressure to the d4 pawn. Uh, but it's it's actually perfectly fight for, uh, fine for for white. White can simply push a4, and now if you capture the b3 pawn, simply rook a to b1, and uh, white will either grab the b7 pawn uh, or keep harassing the black queen. Uh, so after a3, uh, retreating the bishop to e7, uh, we have bishop captures, knight captures, and now knight to f1. Uh, pre uh, remaneuvering the knight to g3, where it will attack the h5 pawn. Uh, rook a to d8, and now knight to g3, and d captures on c4. Uh, we have b captures on c4, and now c5. And uh, what's uh, what's the idea here? Is is it okay to grab the h5 pawn? It's uh, it's perfectly fine. Uh, there's no reason to push g6. This would only weaken the king side, and uh, black will have black will have enough counterplay in the center and on the queen side. An interesting variation here, however, would have been uh, to play knight to g5. This offers uh, this uh, threatens the immediate check checkmate with queen to h7. Uh, this does force g6, and now you capture the h5 pawn. Now black can't capture an h5 because queen to h7 will still be checkmate. Uh, and after knight to f5, you play g4, knight captures on d4, and now after f4, it's an extremely sharp position. Uh, both sides have something to go for. It's uh, it's very strange. I, I, this definitely looks like a position Nakamura would go for. Uh, but instead, after this c5 move, he didn't go for this idea. He played queen to e3. Uh, we have c captures on d4, knight captures on d4, and now knight to g6. Uh, knight to f3 was played, uh, you don't want to capture the pawn now as your pawn on e5 is hanging, so knight to f3 defending it, uh, and queen to a5, now there's a triple attack on the e5 pawn. So Nakamura defends it, rook to e1, and we have rook to c8 attacking the c4 pawn, and we have rook a to d1. Uh, it's, there's no point in defending the c4 pawn, uh, after Gunina captures it, Nakamura will capture on h5. So knight to b6 first, uh, as the rook was attacking the knight on d7, 
Now we have queen to g5 and now rook captures on c4. Queen captures on c5 and uh, uh, on h5 and now queen to a4. Uh, there's a triple attack now on the h4 pawn. Uh, and here Nakamura played knight to e2. And uh, what's the idea behind this knight to e2? Why can't Gunina capture this pawn on h4? Uh, well, if you capture it, this would actually lose the game immediately because of knight to g5, uh, threatening checkmate on h7. And after you play queen to c2 to defend this, now you have knight to d4. Uh, that's the idea of knight to e2. Now you attack the queen. Uh, the only square queen can go to is, g, uh, is g6. And uh, also this knight on d4 is now preventing this uh, rook from c4 to defend the knight on h4. So only move is queen to g6. And now you simply grab the knight and you're up a piece. So a very devious plan by Nakamura, this knight to e2 move. Uh, knight to d5 was played and g3 now. Uh, taking away that very important f4 square from both of black knights. Uh, rook to e8, and here we have uh, knight e to d4. Uh, probably possible was knight to g5 with some ideas uh, of queen to h7, uh, but after rook to g4 it's it's very hard to find a move here for, uh, for white. Uh, how, how do you continue this attack? Uh, probably you have to play something like rook to d3, maybe bring it to f3, if, if this will be possible. Uh, it's hard to say, but Nakamura doesn't go for this. After rook to e8, he plays knight e to d4. Uh, we have knight to f8, and only now knight to g5. Uh, rook to e7, defending the f7 pawn as it was attacked, and now comes knight to f5. And uh, now you have to capture the knight. If you move the rook, let's say rook to d7, uh, now this knight is coming to d6, now there's a triple attack on the f7 pawn, uh, you have to defend this, probably rook, rook uh, c to c7, and after rook to c1 attacking the defender, it's a, it's a very pleasant position for white, uh, hard to say if it will be winning, but uh, probably only white can win this position. So after knight to f5, we have e captures on f5, and now rook captures on d5. Uh, rook to d4 offering a trade of rooks, and here uh, there are a lot of possibilities here. You can defend the rook, maybe queen to f3, you can also capture on d4. Uh, but as Nakamura decided to play the Tal variation of the advanced Karo Khan, uh, here he decides to play a very nice Tal move. He plays e6. And now black has plenty of options. Uh, the first idea is uh, can you capture the rook? Uh, well, if you capture the rook, then you get e captures on f7 with check, rook captures, and after queen captures, uh, king to h8 only square, and queen captures on f8, this will be checkmate. So, okay, you can't capture the rook, but uh, what else can you play? You can maybe capture the pawn. If f captures on e6, uh, you get rook captures on f5, and after you capture, rook captures on e7, uh, queen to d1, forcing a trade of queens, this comes with check, queen captures, rook captures, and after king to g2, uh, it's hard to say. Material is equal, but white is white is much better. Uh, you're threatening to grab all the queenside pawns. Uh, this knight on g5 can never be pushed away, uh, locking out the king from entering the game. Uh, the f7 and h7 square are, are well covered. Uh, if you, after you try to exchange rooks, maybe rook to d7, you get rook to e8, and black is just paralyzed here. So this would lead to a much better position for white, although the material would still be equal. So, another idea after e6, maybe you can go g6, a nice in-between move, attacking the queen. Uh, here, you can simply capture the rook. Rook captures, attacking black's queen, and after queen captures, uh, now you play e captures on f7. This comes with check, rook captures, and now queen to e2. Uh, the rook on f7 is still attacked, rook moves, and now queen to e8, and again, it's hard to find any any good moves or, or even a plan here for black. Black king is wide open and uh, like I said, the, the material is still equal but this is much better for white. So uh, out of all of these options, uh, Gunina decided to go f6 and this uh, leaves Nakamura with only one option uh, and that's to give up the queen. Uh, he plays queen to f7 check. Uh, you don't have any options here. If you play king h8, queen captures on f8, this will be checkmate. So rook captures, we have e captures on f7 with check, king to h8, and now comes uh, rook to e8. The threat, of course, is if the rook is captured, uh, rook captures knight on f8. So what do you play here? Uh, rook to d1 check first, uh, king to g2, and now comes f captures on g5. 
And what's Nakamura's best move here? Here, of course, you think it's pretty obvious. Rook captures knight with check. Uh, you pick up the rook. Okay, let's just show this. Rook captures with check. Uh, King h7, now you pick up the rook, queen captures, and now this very nice rook to h8 check, and uh, white is winning. Uh, let's say king captures, you bring up a queen, king h7 only move, queen captures on f5, next you grab the g5 pawn, and uh, with uh, two, with, with being a pawn up in a queen's endgame like this, this will be winning. Uh, the problem is, uh, after this rook captures on, on d1, the queen will not capture the rook, there is actually queen to c6 check. And after king g1, now there is king to g6, not allowing rook to h8 to be sacrificed with check. Uh, and after something like rook f to d8 threatening to bring out a new queen, king will capture it. And uh, after h captures and g5, you will reach a position similar to the one that was reached in the game. So after this f captures and g5, Nakamura didn't capture the knight. The knight is still pinned, no point in rushing it. Uh, he played rook captures on d1. Uh, we have king to king to h7, uh, and now rook captures on f8, and uh, queen to c6 check, king g1 and king to g6, uh, h captures on g5, and f4 now, uh, g captures on f4, we have queen to e6, uh, rook to d3, and now queen to g4 check, rook to g3 blocking, and queen captures. So here, uh, white has four pawns, black has three pawns, white has two rooks for a queen, it's hard to say. Uh, it's definitely a better position for white as the king is wide open and two rooks will be able to harass the king but uh, this is uh, only move 43 so there's still a lot, a lot of work to be done uh, rook to d8 of course the threat now is uh, f8 bringing out the queen uh, king captures and now rook to d7 check king g6 rook captures on b7 uh, queen c1 check king king h2 we have queen to f4 now threatening to capture on f2 also pinning the rook uh, rook to b2, defending the pawn, uh, queen h4, king g1, and uh, queen to d4. So, so far, Gunina is doing a pretty good job uh, uh, keeping those rooks at bay. We have rook b1, queen d2, uh, rook b3, uh, queen e1 check, king g2, queen e4 check. There are first, uh, It's very usual in positions like this, you have to uh, suffer through a lot of checks before you can make any progress. Uh, queen to e2, again threatening the f2 pawn, uh, rook b to f3, queen to d2 now, rook f8, uh, queen to d6, uh, we have rook to c8, uh, queen d4, rook c6, king to f5, uh, rook f3 check, king captures, and now king g2, uh, queen to e4, pinning the rook and attacking the other rook, rook to c7, king to h6, defending the g7 pawn, now rook goes back to c3, uh, king to h7 and rook to e3. Queen goes back, king h2, we have queen check, rook blocks. Uh, king to g8, rook to c3, uh, queen to f4, rook, king to g1, queen to e5, rook to c4, uh, queen e1 check, king g2, queen to e5, rook c to g4, uh, threatening now the g7 pawn. Queen to d5, uh, this comes with check, king g1 and now king to f8. Now uh, you have to give up the pawn. Rook captures, we have queen to d1 check, king h2, uh, queen to d2, again going after that f2 pawn, now rook to g8 check, uh, king f7, rook 3 to g7 check, king f6, rook to g6 check, king f7, uh, repeating checks a couple of times, and now rook back to g2 defending the pawn. Mm -hmm. Queen to f4, uh, we have rook to g3 blocking, and now queen h6 check, rook h3, queen to f4 check again, king h1, uh, pinning the rook, we have rook to e3, uh, queen to d5, king h2, queen to h5 again, rook to h3, queen e2, uh, we have rook to h4, queen to f3, uh, and a4, Nakamura has to push a pawn, or otherwise there will be the 50 move rule uh, taken over, uh, we have a5, rook to d4, uh, queen to f5, king to g3, queen to c2, rook to f4 check, uh, king to d6, e6, uh, f3, and uh, here we have another pawn move, so Nakamura is uh, pushing that uh, pawn forward, this is move 89, so uh, it's, it was about time. Uh, queen g6 check, uh, rook blocks, we have queen b1, rook e2, king to f5, uh, king g2, uh, queen to d3, rook g4, queen d1, rook b2, queen to c1, 
uh, rook d5, king to f6, uh, rook d4, king e6, rook d to d5, uh, we have queen to c2, and now king to g3. And now uh, those doubled rooks on the fifth uh, rank will be very useful in blocking the checks delivered by the black queen. Uh, queen to a4, uh, grabbing that uh, pawn, we have uh, rook e5 check, king f6, rook f5 check, king g6, uh, rook fc5, king back to f7, uh, rook captures on a5, uh, so no more pawns for black, uh, queen to d7, uh, rook to f5 check, we have king to g6, rook f to d5, uh, queen e6, uh, rook e5, queen d6, rook d5 now, queen c7, and now f4. Uh, now the pawn continues its journey. Queen c1, uh, we have rook to e2, queen g1 check, rook blocks, queen b1, king to g4, king f6, and rook checks on d6. Uh, king to f5, rook g to d2, queen to g1, king to f5, queen to b1 check, rook blocks, and now you'll see that those rooks uh, will be again very useful in blocking checks from the black queen. Queen c2, rook to d7 check, uh, making room for the king, king goes further. Now queen b2 check, but now it's very easy to block those checks and uh, make, uh, make, make a path available for that f pawn. Queen a1, rook to d8 check, king h7, now f5 comes. Queen c3, king to f7, again making room for the pawn. Uh, queen to h3, now rook 4 to d5, queen to g4, uh, rook a to d7. So if any checks are delivered, uh, the white king moves, it will be checked to the black king. Uh, queen h5 check, king e7, queen to h4 check, uh, king goes back. Queen h5 check, king f6 now, now black is in check. Uh, king to h6, uh, uh, we have rook 5 to d6, uh, queen to e1, now kind of creating a wall against Nakamura's king here as you can see. Uh, king to f7. Uh, king g5 and now f6 and now that pawn is already already <laughs> too far up the board uh, queen h5 check uh, king to king to e7 uh, and queen to e2 check king goes to f8 we have king to g6 and now rook to g7 check uh, king goes uh, to g to f5 f7 now we have queen to a2 uh, king to king goes uh, to g8 uh, King e5, rook to a6, uh, the idea is to deflect the queen, so this pawn will not be pinned, if queen captures then pawn can freely promote. Uh, we have queen to c4, keeping an eye on that uh, f, f pawn uh, to stay pinned, and now comes rook g to g6, and uh, this is move 135, and it was in this position that Valentina Gunina, Russian Grandmaster, resigned the game. Uh, the threat, of course, is rook to e6 check. Uh, checking the king, blocking the queen's pin to the f7 pawn, and it's all over. There's nothing you can do here. If you try and maintain this, let's say queen b3, uh, doesn't really matter. Rook checks, you, you can either capture or move, it doesn't matter. White brings up a queen in every variation, uh, this is game over. So after rook g to g6, uh, Valentina Gunina uh, resigned the game, and this uh, long, long game, and uh, a very nice victory for Hikaru Nakamura, uh, I believe Nakamura won the last uh, three Gibraltar uh, chess festivals and uh, last year I think they awarded him something extra uh, for the prize. Uh, he, he won first prize uh, um, in, in, uh, in playoffs against uh, Anton, the, the Spanish Grandmaster, uh, but uh, they didn't just give him the prize, I think they gave him some special watch or something and I think they said that if he comes back next year uh, and the wins again that they'll give him uh, something even more extra like a car or something but uh, I, I have to check it out uh, as after the Tata Steel chess tournament finishes I will try and cover some more games from the, from Gibraltar chess festival so yeah uh, that's the game uh, it's a pretty long game I do hope you enjoyed it like I said first uh, 32 moves are important later it's pretty much just a uh, technique how do you how do you win against the queen with two rooks but uh, Nakamura managed to do it I think he, he said that they played the game past uh, 11 p.m. so you know you have to play that game and then wake up tomorrow and then play another game so very very tiresome so yeah uh, I would like to thank Joseph Tyler for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot I really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching uh, I am interested how many of you were actually able to watch this video until the end. <laughs> so uh, do, do share in the comments if you were able to. Uh, thank you all for watching and I will see you soon.